What's up, YouTube? This is Red Zone 101. As always, God bless and peace. Hopefully, everyone's doing well out there. I tell you, I'm enjoying this beautiful weather. It always make me pause when I see people ride by my property and they slow down. Anyway. <laughs> okay, maybe they're just admiring the new fruit trees that I planted. Anyway, guys. Enjoying this beautiful weather in the D. I'm telling you, it's not like fall. It's almost like summer. That said, my prayers go out to the people in New York and other parts of the country that are dealing with this rough weather and even in the world. I don't want to seem insensitive. Insensitive. I'm just enjoying this beautiful, what they call a fall day here. Anyway, that's not what the video is about. Let's get right to it, okay? I want to share with you a secret that most criminals, most don't want you to know, okay? Now, any of you that, that have viewed my channel, that have watched my content, know that there are times that I'll carry a 22. Now I load it. Mag is loaded, the gun isn't. I will carry a 22 like this. It's a Smith & Wesson m and compact, semi-auto for self-defense. I have no problem with it. That said, there are people out there that wouldn't carry a 22 to save their lives. Literally, they think it's underpowered, um, it's not reliable, and uh, the list goes on, okay? I have no problems with it. I think about the pros and cons and try to prepare for it. But that said, again, I wanna share with you a secret that most criminals don't want you to know. And it's very simply this, very well simply put, as a wise man once said, no one wants extra holes in them. It's that simple. Criminals just like me and you want to go home at the end of the day. Okay? Um, that's why they choose targets that, that, that they think are going to be soft targets. Easy targets. Okay? Just like predators in the wild. You know, a lion. Lions don't normally go after other lions. Okay? When they're searching for food. They don't go after a bull elephant or a rhino or a hippo normally, okay? They go after animals that are smaller than them, that are weak, that aren't predators. They're going after, and uh, even with those animals, got this little, this little bug flying by. Even, even with those animals, they're going after the young, the old, the, uh, like the elderly, um, the weak, the sick. Those are the animals that normally they're going after because... They don't want to get hurt in the process of trying to take down their prey. And it's the same way with predators that are two-legged, okay? They, they're looking for somebody that's going to be an easy target, the young, the old, um, people with uh, physical challenges, what have you, um, etc. okay? They're looking for an easy target, okay? And that's why I said none of them want extra holes in them. And like I said, they want to go home the same, just like you and me. So when people say something like this right here, I'll take the mag out again. A 22 is insignificant for self-defense. I say that's, that's crap. That's crap. Because if you take this out and you put two or three holes in someone's center mass, most people say, oh, they're just going to keep coming. That's a bunch of crap. I'm going to tell you, most people... Getting shot is a traumatic experience, even with a small caliber like a 22. Now, granted, it's not going to have the punch of something like this right here. This is my Canon KP9 subcompact, unloaded in a 9 mil. Most people would consider this the best choice for self-defense. But what if you're getting older or have some physical challenges and you're not able to handle even the recoil of a 9 millimeter? There are people that are out there that can't. But still, most people would consider this the best choice for self-defense. It's not going to be the best choice if you can't shoot it well. If you shoot something like this right here, a 22 semi-auto, better than you shoot a 9 mil, a nine mil, and people will tell you, go to the range, practice, that will alleviate that. Yes, sometimes, but there are people who might have physical challenges or getting older like myself. I'm getting older. I'm still in decent shape, although I'm starting to feel it, <laughs> but 
they start to lose some of their upper body strength. So they can't handle the recoil of even something like this right here, 380. This right here is a SIG uh, P238 and 380. It's got six round mag. It's not gonna have the magazine capacity as let's say your nine mil. I got a flush mag in there now, but I can actually change it out to something like this right here. That's a 15 round mag and they do make 18 round, 18 round mags for this gun. Again, it's not gonna have the magazine capacity like of the nine, even like my 22 here, that's a 10 round mag, okay? But at the same time, if you're more effective with something like this, a 380, or something like this, a 22, go with the 22. It's better to get effective shots on target, okay? With something like a 22, even like what I'm carrying now. This right here is the Smith & Wesson, Model 351 uh, is an air light, very, very light gun. I am carrying it, so it is loaded. Chambered in 22 Magnum. It's a seven shot, okay? I carry this and I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I know if I can get two or three effective shots on target compared to let's say somebody missing with something like this right here, um, that's going to be more beneficial than those misses, okay? And again, getting shot is getting shot. Now, granted, bigger calibers, I do admit, do more damage. But they're only going to be as effective. And this is, let's, getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about the number one rule in a gunfight. What is the number one rule in any gunfight? Have a gun. I don't care whether it's a 22, 22 Magnum, 380, 9 mil, or if you really want to go and get something a little more powerful, something like this in 410 and uh, 45 long coat, uh, a Taurus Judge. Got five shots of this. Yeah, put that back down. Or even something like this right here, <laughs> okay? This right here is my uh, Rossi, I'm trying to remember the, the name of it. Anyway, it's a 410 <laughs> single shot that takes a three inch four to even something like this. Number one rule, again, in a gunfight, there are better choices than this, yes. But the number one rule in a gunfight is have a gun. I'm trying to remember the name of this bad boy. It's gonna bug the heck out of me. Some of you are gonna comment and you're gonna know. Uh, no, I don't have my readers on, so. Anyway, I'll figure it out. You guys know. But my point is, number one rule in a gunfight is have a gun, right? What is the second most important rule in a gunfight? And this rule is just as important as the fir first rule. Number one rule in a gunfight is have a gun. The number two rule in a gunfight is who's behind the trigger. It's simple. If someone has a nine mil, okay, is untrained, don't go to the range and have no technique, what have you. They're not trained. They're, they're not effective with it, okay? Um, and let's say they come across somebody that has a 22. But this person with the 22 is a freaking surgeon, okay? I mean, wherever he points that, that's where that shot is going. Who do you think is going to come out on top in that gunfight? Especially if the person with the 22 is able to get their 22 out faster and get effective shots on target, whether center mass or head shots or what have you. Who's going to come out on top in that gunfight? My bet is the person that's got the 22. As long as they've got a good, reliable 22 and good working condition, using really good ammo like 22 punch is lubed up, they've tested it. 
they know for the most part it's going to work. That person to me is going to come out on top over the person that's inexperienced with the nine mil. So again, second most important rule in a gunfight is who's behind the trigger. Those two things are going to determine who wins a gunfight. Number one rule, you go into a gunfight, you don't have a gun, uh, and don't get me wrong, I definitely support using less lethals too, but we're talking about guns here now. Going into a gunfight, you don't have a gun, person with a gun's going to win. Second rule, who's behind the trigger? Both of the people have guns, right? The person that's better trained, let's put that person like on the right side, is better trained than the person who's on the left and is able to draw their weapon first, meaning they see someone coming to carjack them or something, and they see them reach and pull a gun, but the person is quicker, grabs his gun, her gun, gets it out, gets effective shots on target. I'm not telling you when or when not to pull the trigger, that's on you, okay? In a self-defense situation, they're all different. But whoever is able to get effective shots on target, that's what's going to matter in a gunfight. Caliber size, yes, that's important, okay? Larger calibers do big, do uh, do more damage. Um, they make bigger holes in you. But the bottom line, all guns, they put holes in you. And it depends on where you put those holes, okay? That's what matters. And like I said, the reason I was thinking about this is because so many people, when I post a video and I talk about, I carry a 22, I had this one viewer said, yeah, that 22 will get you killed. And I thought, well, any caliber will get you killed. That's just, I mean, that's common knowledge, okay? It's not just a 22, but any caliber. And and uh, if you're not effective with it, if you don't practice with whatever it is you're going to use for self-defense, you're not going to be very effective, okay? And again, that's whether you're carrying a 22, a 380, a 9 mil, which is a great choice, a revolver chambered in 45 ACP or 410 shot, or something even as simple as this right here. Um, Rossi Brawler. See, I remembered the name of it. Took me a minute, guys, I'm getting over it. Okay, but anyway, the Rossi Brawler. One shot, single action, is going to be more effective than somebody that has, I don't care if it's a 1911 and they can't hit the broadside of a barn with it, but you with your Rossi at self-defense distances using whether 410 buckshot or let's say a 40, uh, 45 long coat is going to be way more effective with that one shot than that person with that 1911. And I'm not dissing 1911s. I love them. I think they're beautiful guns. They're great guns. They've been around since, what is it, like World War II? But still, the person behind the trigger is the one that's going to determine who's going to win a gunfight. Very simple. So again, it depends on you, okay? My advice, practice. Now, you might not be as good as someone else. I'm, I'm good, okay? And I'm not bragging. I'm better than most people that I go to the range and I see, okay? And... Uh, Again, I'm not bragging. I'm just being real. I'm being honest. Okay. But that doesn't mean that there aren't people who are much better than I am. There are. Okay. I watch people like um, the Honest Outlaw. Man, he's on YouTube. That brother can shoot. He's a, I mean, he's good. I mean, he can put him way out there with a handgun. We're talking like 50 to almost 100 yards. Like I said, he's good. Hickok, 45. Coolest old dude on YouTube. I mean, come on, we got to give it to him. That that brother can shoot. He's really good at what he does. And he has such a calm, cool demeanor. I love watching his videos. Very informative. Another person, Colin Knorr. He's a great, I mean, he's really good. Very informative. I think he's a lawyer. Yeah, very um, pro Second Amendment. Um, very informative. Very good shooter. Those guys are way better than me in my opinion that said when i go to the range i'm still better than 
good 80% of the people that are practicing. But then, but then again, I've been practicing for years. Why did I say this? As even though I'm better than most of the people I see like at the range, that doesn't mean that I couldn't get God. In other words, anybody can get God. Okay. That's why I try not to have an egotistical attitude when it comes to self-defense. I'm confident in my strengths and uh, my, uh, like I know my weaknesses, my pros, my cons, but I know at the same time, anybody can get God. Anybody can have a good day. Everybody can have a bad day. No one's going to be 100%, 100% of the time. But again, if you practice, okay, that's going to enhance your chances of coming out on top in a self-defense situation where let's say you did have to draw your firearm. And even though you may not be as good as some of the people that I just mentioned, you're still going to be better than most people that are out there, especially if you're realistic about your strengths, your weaknesses, knowing that, let's say, I don't shoot a nine mil well. Okay, I practice, but I practice, I'm not very good with it. You might say I'm better and more comfortable and practice more with something like this right here, a 22 Magnum. I feel more comfortable. I'm better with it. Then I'm like this. Go with whatever you're more proficient with, okay? Don't get, caliper size is important, but it's not the most important thing when it comes to self-defense, okay? Self-defense, number one rule, having a gun in a gunfight. Number one rule. Second, second rule is who's behind the trigger. Practice. So, guys, I'm not going to drag this out. Um, hopefully this video was helpful. I just wanted to get a point across, especially to the naysayers that, you know, um, this the 22 and <laughs> I just, and basically they almost look at it like it's not even a real caliber. I'm like, hopefully you never have to find out firsthand whether it is or whether it's not. Okay. Anyway, guys, want to, well, thank you for watching. I'm going to, uh, Go on and continue to enjoy this beautiful day. I um, want you to be careful. Watch your six out there. Let me know what you think, okay? Anyway, God bless. Take care. And, I'll, and as always, peace. Watch your six.